Thanks for tuning in to the Redstone Engine YouTube channel. Today, we'll be doing something uh, a little bit interesting in the terms of I'll be showing you a devlog of three games that have been making simultaneously, pretty much. Uh, because I had an idea of three really cool games that I wanted to create, and the best way that I thought of doing it was doing them all at the same time. Uh, so it should be quite interesting. Uh, every two months I'll be doing kind of a, a devlog of, of kind of the progress that I've done, as well as releasing a demo or like the current build that I have for the game. So you can physically test it and then give me some interactive feedback to best see where to shape the game and to basically get some constructive feedback onto how the games are. So uh, I don't know about you, but two months isn't a long time, especially since I'm still in college, so I better get to work. So I said I've been working on three games, but what are the three games? Well, the first one is... Actually, can you... I don't think you can read that. I wonder if I have a bigger marker. Actually, I think I do. Okay, it's a pink marker, but we'll have to deal with it. There we go. You should, yeah, you should definitely be able to see that more. Uh, yeah, first game, <laughs> it is uh, Villain Rewind. Now, Villain Rewind, I actually created before as part of a game jam uh, for one week to make uh, just a game based on the theme Rewind. Yeah. And I actually think it's a really cool game. And so the premise is kind of showing some old clips of the uh, original game is that you're in this big room and you're trying to get to the end of it. Uh, but the thing is, the Villain Rewind, he always rewinds the room back to the beginning. So you basically have to go through the same room over and over and over again, except the thing is, is that he remembers your pattern. Even though you rewind back to the start, he remembers it and places traps exactly where you were. So then you always have to adapt your pad to basically avoid all these new traps that he sets up. And eventually as time goes on, there's like an exponential amount of traps that you have to dodge. And it's actually a surprisingly fun game that I, I didn't expect to, to do so well. Uh, so I think I want to basically recreate that in Unreal. So you may have noticed a key point in that the original game was made in Unity. I am now working on Unreal. Yes, I've made the switch from Unity to Unreal. Uh, now, this switch is a pretty big one. Uh, I didn't expect it to be as big as it is because, you know, I, I've worked in C Sharp for Unity, I've also worked in Java, and I thought, wow, these are pretty similar. I assume all programming languages are pretty similar. I was wrong. C++, which is what Unreal uses, is a lower level programming language, which basically means like C Sharp, Java, Python, they're they're pretty much like pretty much English that so you can you can pretty well understand it. But then as you move down and get lower level to assembly, it's a lot more machine code where it's a lot more geared towards what the machine can better understand and run faster essentially. So that's kind of one sort of reason why I moved to Unreal. The main reason though is because for Villain Rewind, I for a lot of games that I, I can imagine and, and that I want to create. They're dramatic, and for for Unity, or, sorry, for the original project in Unity, uh, it was uh, you could see the visuals were were uh, a decent amount for a 3D game with um, the lighting coming in, and I actually used the HD render pipeline to get it all working. And that took a lot of effort, and it's still not to the visual quality that I'd like. Thing is with Unreal though is that it comes with a lot of these visual things right out of the box and it's a lot easier to kind of set up and do. So I kind of, that's kind of the main reason why I moved to Unreal. And unfortunately because of this change, this means that I wasn't able to get as much done as I wanted to get done for these projects. So fortunately there won't be as much done uh, as I would have hoped, but hopefully it's still entertaining and I'll explain the, the long process that I went through for a lot of the things that I've done. Here it is. Here's what I have so far. You can see uh, it's a nice little structure here. It's exactly like the um, the original in terms of the size of it. I, I went back and checked, and you can see I can go through to the end, and then it teleports me back. But then, right where I've been, there's gonna be traps placed. Uh, these traps are based 
our, our place based on off of where you've been. But yeah, you could actually see that there's only one so far here. Uh, but then if I hit play, uh, then I can kind of show you that it, it all it all comes out like this. And how that works is basically uh, I like all this is from one script. And that script basically asks, like, hey, if you're on this row here, uh, duplicate forwards. But then if you're uh, on, or if you're less than this point here, uh, then it'll just duplicate to the right as well. And so it just does that all the way to the end. So it's just kind of a, a bunch of checks and measures to make sure that it does all this. Uh, but then another thing is you can see that it tilts and it's all randomized. He's gonna just randomize it after I duplicate it, uh, so then the duplication doesn't like build on to the uh, to the to the slight offset. Um, but then the rotation, I essentially uh, this is kind of the math equation I have for it. it. Basically, centers it zero of in the middle of it, and then as it goes on, it just kind of increments the degree very slightly, as well as adding a bit of randomization in there. Um, as well with, with the other rotations and it it works pretty well um, and it's kind of a it's kind of a robust system um, in the terms of being able to kind of increase the size because before the size was smaller and I, I increased it I did take a, a little bit of looking through the code and figure out kind of how to do it I could realistically I, I probably should put it to variables to where I can just put in variables and then I can easily increment the size in case I want to change anything, but uh, I haven't done that. Oh, and yeah, you can also die to acid. I have a plane here on the bottom that basically if you hit the plane then you um, just get reset back to the beginning. Uh, but then also, um, if you slide, you can kind of see into it a bit, um, which is a kind of a, a slight problem. Um, but I, I think I'm gonna probably rework it anyways whenever I get the, the acid actually moving and flowing and all that. Or I may just check the um, the Z or the Y of the player and then just check if the Y or Z of the player goes below a certain point instead of actually having a uh, collision. But I think I just wanted to test collision and so then I wanted to do it that way instead. I had to learn how to do like coroutines and stuff because um, well, not not necessarily coroutines, but in, in Unity I would use coroutines to basically iterate in like for a loop. I can show like an example of it here uh, to where I'm basically like iterating through a loop and like like it's not like pausing the game to run this loop. It's it's just like you wait for one second and then it updates and, and does the next thing. Um, and so that's good for like doing animations in code instead of doing animations in the actual game engine. Uh, and so it's good if you have like a complex math in there that you want to do coding wise. Um, but then for this game I had to kind of learn how to do that um, in this game and this is kind of how you do like the coroutine-esque thing here which is using a timer. Um, it's, it's a different system and it's not, you're not running one function, you're essentially running like the same function over and over to get kind of a um, a looping effect, uh, so it's a bit different and it doesn't offer as much flexibility as Unity does, but again, that's just now using C++ instead of C Sharp, it's a bit harder to work with, but uh, I am, I'm learning and that's how I got the, the sliding to work. Something that I did do actually is um, with the sliding, before the sliding was just uh, applying the velocity in one direction, but then like if you're falling it doesn't you don't actually fall you just kind of glide over it which is you, you can clearly see it over here where you were just kind of gliding across it um, but then it's also a problem for cases like this uh, so for right now like I can of course slide a slide across it but if uh, there's two then you obviously want to fall into there before that wasn't actually happening like this one here Typically, I, I probably need more momentum, but typically you'd be able to just like kind of glide across it pretty easily. But then if it's two or you don't have enough momentum, then you fall into it. And yeah, it's all pretty much working. I encourage you to go check out the, um, the original game right now uh, to kind of see kind of where the direction of this game is going. Yeah, that's it for this game. Um, on to the next game. All right, just wait one second. Uh, before we go on to the next game, uh, I decided to get some face-to-face -face feedback on the game Villain Rewind. Uh, because I know my friend, Test Your Mind, 
uh, he said at one point that actually Villain Rewind is his favorite game of mine that I've made. So of course if I'm making kind of a remake of it, then I'm sure he'll be interested and be willing to give me some feedback. So here's some footage of me uh, interviewing about it. Welcome to the stage, test your mind. Uh, I, I have you here reacting to, uh, based off your, your new React channel. Yeah, test your React. Okay, so all you have to do is uh, hit play and you'll, uh, you'll, you'll see what it is. There you go. Can you guess what it is? Villain Rewind. Yeah, your, your favorite game. So, so you made it, you made it look good. <laughs> yeah, essentially meaning I made it unreal. You can I thought this was Unity. It has a U in the corner. They both start with you. It actually, okay. It, it, w A S D. Have you played a game before? Uh, uh, you play Mario. Uh, the sliding function does work as well. Like, shit. Yeah, you don't know you don't normally play. There you go. You just die to acid. Uh, it I looks good. I don't know where the volume is working. Oh, I just gotta put on the Oculus headset. Yeah, you just gotta put on the Oculus headset and then you can hear it. Yo, villain rewind and, and VR. Okay, here you go. You just died to acid and you're at the very end. Oh, I didn't know which way to go. <laughs> yeah, there's no real, real obvious forward direction right now. So, what what do you what do you think of this? What are you, what are your first thoughts here? I think that this is something made in Unreal. That's for sure. <laughs> is that good or bad? Well, I mean, this looks good. Oh, it's you, it's uh, You just gotta spam jump. Oh. Yes, I I haven't. That's a slight bug. I think it looks good. Like all these uh, all these uh, reflections and maps and stuff. Yeah, those are all sample textures I haven't run. It's very basic what I've done. Hey, you know, all of Mario 64 used sample textures. Oh, really? Yeah. Like every single texture in the game is a texture taken from like a CD disc of like real life textures. Oh. Or, or images of real life. Well, this isn't real life. Not yet. <laughs> Next time, Villain Rewind 3.0. Now in real life. <laughs> this is really this is Villain Rewind if it real. Wait, I didn't. I, know, I haven't actually tested these. <laughs> There's a bit of acid there. You gotta slide under it. Yeah, sliding. Uh, yeah. Well, you gotta go forward and slide under it. You need to build up momentum to slide. You can't just slide from nowhere. Well, clearly you've never slid in an that in real life. <laughs> I just wa I wanted to test it, but all of these lead into the lava. Here we go. Lava? That's acid. Come on. Acid. It looks like cheese to me. <laughs> that's because that's also a default texture. <laughs> Is this default texture for cheese? Yeah. Yeah, I used the cheese texture for this. I could have swore. You could have swore? Ah, uh, but good thing this is this is uh, in I mean uh, SFW. So so uh, any any feedback on changes or uh... the walking feels way slow. I think it could be uh, a little bit. I think I, I think I did actually increase the, the default walking, uh, but yeah, I can increase it more. I mean, I haven't played Real and Rewind in a while. Yeah. Also, I like games that are fast. Yeah, yeah, this is definitely meant to be kind of a fast-paced. Um, Dramatic and, 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 uh, and a lot uh, is this stuff. motion blur? Uh, I think it applies a bit of it default. Yeah, I just get rid of the motion blur. Yeah, I think it can do that. I, I mean, I did purposely add it into the original villain rewind, but yeah, motion blur. I don't like motion blur. Yeah, I, I did find a way to get rid of that, um, but I hadn't done that yet. So this, so I can see that it, there's a real gun now. Well, that, that's a default. I'm gonna change it. I'm not gonna lie. I, I, this kind of remind. I was like, this looks like Buzz Lightyear's uh, <laughs> gun. Where's the big dude the uh, waving at you at the end? Uh, well, he's... where's the villain? In? <laughs> it's villain rewind without the villain. So, this is just rewind, but you know, not as bad as YouTube rewind. Oh my god, I can't even go anywhere. You wouldn't actually be able to do that in the um, in the original villain rewind because how I detected Oops. how you can jump is if you're on a certain Y level. So if you're if you're actually on top of something. Then you wouldn't actually be able to jump. Wow, cool. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, traps. I'm just going to get people through. Ah. Yeah, I think this looks good. Yeah. Plays good. So you you think this is um 
like in terms of making like a, a full version of oh my god <laughs> where am I gonna go <laughs> of villain rewind like this would be a good direction for it yeah except without the tilt at the end I don't like this without the what the tilt at the end you don't like the tilt why not uh cause I prefer it flat uh no I mean you know what I mean right like it's it's going it's tilting downwards yeah, on the yeah. sides. Yeah, yeah, I, I purposely did that. What does it say? Preview. <laughs> I've never actually seen that. What? Preview. <laughs> I mean, this is a preview. That's true. Huh. See, this is why you shouldn't use sample textures. I'm pretty stuck there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's I, a dead I end. also don't have the uh, the other two. Um... Yeah, I don't have the other two uh, traps. Which are the launching ones and the slime ones? Oh yeah. Well, I never liked the, I never liked the slime ones. I did like, <laughs> I did like the uh, trampoline ones. Yeah, yeah, I do like those. Uh, so you don't think that it should like just drop off into nothing on the sides? No, this is uh, I think it should just be flats, you know. Help. This is this is just stupid now. <laughs> Bad game. Can't, I don't know where to go. <laughs> well, I don't think you're supposed to get this deep into it. Where am I? And like, <laughs> you're stuck. And the gun doesn't work, so you can't really move him. Alright, I'd have been a refund. <laughs> you can restart it. How? Escape and then hit play again. I also recently implemented the sounds. Back. This is how you beat it. <laughs> Machine gun implemented. <laughs> what do you think of the uh, the size of the arena? Uh, I think it's a good size. Uh, I think, I mean, it feels it feels closer to the original. Uh, maybe yeah, it, yeah. It, I, it was originally actually smaller, but then I, I checked the size of the original, and it was actually. This size, so I made it this size. Now it feels smaller on the left and right, but I think that's because of the tilt. Yeah. And also, it seems like you still have the thing where it's like it will only start spawning platforms in that row if you've visited the row. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It, it keeps track of where you've been. How is it able to still bounce in the middle? <laughs> For um, that's kind of what I actually did in uh, in the original building line as well. Is that the the actual box colliders for those cubes are actually larger, so whenever you're walking, you don't like dip into the, the cracks each time you go over a cube. Nah, it should be like that. <laughs> you want to just... I'm going through. <laughs> yeah, so I just did the same thing that I did for the original, just expanded the, the box collider. Alright, well I have to say, this is good. It's good? You, you... I, would pay, I would pay at least a pack of bubblegum for this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you pay anything for this. It's not like finished at all. Well, no, not for this. Oh, but I, like it, we're we're finished. This is not even worth the pack of bubble gum. This is like yeah, yeah. this is like a stick of gum maybe. Yeah. So if if this was pretty much exactly like how it was in Unity, but just made in Unreal, it would be a pack of bubble gum. Yeah. This that's that's a new currency. Oh, another interesting thing is that wherever you finish, like if you finish on the complete right side. Whenever you respawn, you respawn on the right side. Really? Yeah. I haven't really noticed. Like, will it work but for this they, side? Yeah, yeah. So if you do that, you can see you spawn on the left side. But then, of course, you can't take the same path again. You, know, you sure about that? Yeah. It's a certain place. Thing there. I just took the same path again. Oh. <laughs> I didn't realize. Okay. <laughs> oh you need to stop putting those at the end. It's hard to tell. You don't want to? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I see what you mean. I think the last row of blocks should be like safety maybe that's what it originally was but it's like you know what i want to spice it up and, <laughs> i want you know, that i want to make them suffer but then i realized that yeah for for missing blocks it's very hard to tell where the end is no uh, motion yeah. blur. that that's that this is good no no motion blur no motion blur yeah like i'm playing a real fps i don't even know what fps stands for frame per second oh okay no, I'm joking. It stands for uh, <laughs> yeah, first-person shooter. With it only being um, three, three traps, you have a lot more blocking traps, like a lot more of the pillars, where you can't really get past it. Yeah. Well. So I think whenever there's more uh, traps, it should be easier to get through. Well, easier, but all, then also more complicated. 
<laughs> Alright, I think I won in this game. You want you want this game or you won this game? I won it. Oh you won it. So again, any any last minute things that you want to say? No. None at all. Subscribe to test your reaction. <laughs> to test your reaction, yeah. It's your new channel. But yeah, be sure to check out Villain Rewind whenever it actually comes to fruition. Uh, also, maybe more game modes. Uh, or a story. Oh, there's a story. Yeah, there's a story. Well, uh, thanks, Test Your Mind, for uh, going on to my stage here. Yeah, we were. this is actually filmed in front of a live studio audience. Yeah, every applaud. Woo! Alright, so, not necessarily good, not necessarily bad. Kind of in the middle, which is typical for constructive feedback. Uh, I, I did definitely take his, um, his motion blur feedback into consideration that I have implemented that feature. Uh, now in terms of like the edges being not solid, like you can easily side off it, based off of kind of the, the plan that I have for the game, it kind of messes some things up. Um, so I'm going to leave it in there for now, uh, but I'm willing to adapt. I'm not going to just ignore the feedback that if everybody then like unanimously agrees that there should be walls that are not going to not do that um, because I, I do want to make these games the best that they can be. So that was his feedback and uh, if you'll stick around for a little moment I have a little uh, commercial of something that I'd like to promote. Alright I'm back. Back to my home planet of... of... what? What is this? I can't believe these humans. I left them for one year and they've done this to my oceans. They're all green. Everything is just filled with trash and there's just nothing. And I just, I just can't stand it. I, there's got to be something that they could have done to have, to have just reversed this. Have this not have happened. What? Oh, it was this Team C's. Huh. Maybe if they just donated to Team C's, they... Oh, it looks like they have 30 million pounds of trash out of the ocean. There's only one human surviving and he's off playing this random game on these, on these weird tiles. I mean, like, who does that? It's just, it's just utterly outrageous, and I just, I wish more people would donate. I mean, like, the trash revolution is coming, and it's like, you have to pick a side. You're on the side of the, the green, sludgy oceans that just pollute everything. It's just utterly disgusting. Like, all the species have died because of this. Or you could have clean seas full of, like, amazing marine life. Like, I didn't leave this planet to come back and have it all destroyed. If I knew it was going to be destroyed, I would have stayed. I would have stayed. I thought there was more beauties out in the universe, but turns out, I just, you don't know what you're missing until it's gone. Even if the donation goal has reached 30 million, it's, it's got to help tons, loads even, to just donate even a little bit more. Look, they've they've got merch. They've got merch. Look, look at this. Look at this lad here. He's wearing the Team C shirt. It looks so beautiful. It just all fits together. Oh, we're back. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so now to move on to the second game. You've seen all the all the stuff that I've been into the first game, and the second game, it's gonna get a bit technical. Uh, but the game is game label two. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, it, it's not in a place where I I feel ready to express the ideas and the basically concept behind this game until I get uh, a lot more of the foundation set up in place. But it should be very exciting, uh, and I still have a lot to show about it. Now, what it entails so far is procedural world generation, which is pretty complex in itself, and I plan to add uh, a lot more into it. So uh, let's kind of get into it that a bit more. All right, so uh, here's game two, another <laughs> uh, sea of nothingness until I hit play. <laughs> it's uh, kind of funny that the first games that I'm starting Unreal with uh, just have a lot of back-end stuff to do. Um, but it's kind of what I enjoy and I wanted to kind of do that. Uh, as you can see, it's it's a bit of world generation actually. Um, that's kind of a complex topic that needs a lot to, uh, to kind of fully understand and to fully go into. Alright, this, this is a lot. <laughs> this is the research that I've done uh, and kind of some of the ideas that I have for how to generate terrain. Um, so, Kind of what's odd is I started from right to left, but if you'll bear with me. Um, so I've been thinking about kind of how to do 
infinite world generation for a little while now because I it's always kind of interesting to me and I knew eventually at one point I'd have to create a game that had some procedural generation in it. Um, so I knew kind of the double height map, basically what that means is you have two Perlin map noises here, here's a little diagram of it. Um, one, one affects the terrain or the height uh, more than the other uh, and we'll call these kind of height maps. And also for the useful techniques in the five major types of biomes, I did do some research and if you want to look at the links that I, I kind of used to, to do this research, it should be in the description. Something interesting is Veroni biomes. This is a Veroni diagram right here. It kind of has a, a cell-like structure, um, but there's there's kind of multiple ways to, to go about it. It's kind of with the random and Lloyd relaxation. And that's kind of with the random points. You have random points there, but there's an interesting thing called Lloyd relaxation, which I don't think I'm gonna use um, because I'm gonna do something interesting kind of with the, the random noise uh, generation of the points. Um, but with Lloyd Relaxation, it basically takes all those points and spaces them out. Uh, it's a general abbreviation of what it does. You can look more into it by searching up Lloyd Relaxation. But the next thing is um, that I found kind of useful techniques that the other people have done is to break up biomes by rivers. Uh, now what that means is basically, uh, like it, if you think of like two different biomes, like specifically I'm going to name like a rainforest and a desert a lot. Rainforests have a lot of like, um, What's it called? Precipitation, or um, yeah, just precipitation. It's a lot wetter than a desert is. So you can't, it's gonna be really odd if you combine them both together. Now what some things do is it breaks up the biomes by rivers, it, it makes sense. Okay, you have a river there, it kind of has maybe two different climates on the two different sides of the rivers. Um, that's not entirely what I'm looking for. I, it is a good technique and I, I may use that a bit, which I'll kind of explain later. And I talked about Perlin Noise. This is Perlin Noise. Perlin Noise is more for kind of terrain generation um, in terms of like you can do a biome lookup chart. This is kind of like an example of a biome lookup chart. I'm skipping around a bit, but I'm, I'm trying to go through it as fast as possible. Basically, a biome lookup chart, you have like temperature here, precipitation here. Actually, I have two here, like precipitation temperature. But pearl and worms, that's more for caves. I could do that for caves in terms of like, the pearl and worms would, it basically looks like worms, but I could just make the worms be caves. <laughs> um, but I haven't actually gotten to uh, caves yet that much. Um, but I'm looking chart, I explain that. Uh, the problem with that is, is if you look, <laughs> another uh, diagram here, a pearl and noise, is that it, it's kind of snaky at some parts, it's kind of blobby at some parts. And, it's not really exactly the terrain I'm necessarily looking for. Uh, because what you can do for like the precipitation and temperature is overlay two of them right here, as you can see, and then one one Perlin map would represent like the precipitation and then the other one would kind of represent uh, the temperature. And so then you would basically just check at each section and be like, hey, what's the temperature and precipitation? I'm gonna be that biome. You can also use an equalizer. Now, during my research, I didn't actually, I couldn't find the website that I, that I found that talked about Equalizer, I did, and this is what they're talking about. You can see that although a Perlin map has um, values between or that go between zero and one, which is like black and white, um, it tends to make a kind of a curve, and a lot of it is in between. So, like something that they did is just like that was a histogram representation of the zero and one. So what they did is they just use an equalizer to kind of equal it all out, so you have like. An distribution of, of biomes and I, I think that may limit the amount of like small biomes there is but I, I don't know still maybe not what I'm looking for. Um, next thing is kind of blend height. This is kind of simple like I said you have the double height maps per, per biome like some are more hilly than others um, and so what blend height does is basically like oh you have a really hilly biome and it's gonna blend into a less hilly biome because like if I don't do that, then it would be hilly, hilly. Oh, this this value here that was multiplied by like five is now multiplied by one. So it's like boom, and it's just a, a sheer cliff. So that's something that I definitely need to look into is a uh, blend height. Um, and then moving from right to left, <laughs> uh, I looked up the five major types of biomes because I'm making a biome type system, and I need to kind of know how biomes are, are, are done, how they're how they're composed and things like that. So yeah, you can see aquatic, the, the sub-biomes, um, but also through my research, it's, it's determined by 
it's the biomes are determined by vegetation, soil, climate, and wildlife. So th those are kind of things to look into, into like how are biomes formed and how would I specifically form them in my own game. So this is kind of the final ideas that I have. This is kind of how I do the biome generation currently. Uh, so I have carved large water features using Veroni. Um, Veroni again looks like this and basically what that does is if I just take one cell here, that's an island and with the, um, with the cell borders I can essentially like bolden them out um, to make, basically make a water feature around that. And I can do that uh, spread out throughout the whole island, or not the whole island, but the whole map. Uh, but I don't want islands everywhere, so I'm probably going to have an underlining Perlin noise map, um, which basically acts as like a random um, random number generator. You'll still get large land masses, but specifically in the center, I'm thinking of having an island, because that's kind of what the game is looking for. So that's kind of what I have there. Uh, so something interesting with that is if I'm doing this kind of structure here, then I can basically create a high map from water to inland. And so you can kind of make curved um, up uh, high maps. Yeah, so then it, it kind of curves up. And so then what specifically am I going to do for the bio? Because this kind of, that creates the structure of land masses versus water. That kind of specifies what I want to do there. And maybe a land mass will be an ocean. Um, but what am I going to do specifically for biomes? Like what biomes are going to be on the land masses and how are they distinguished? So what I thought is with this same Veroni pattern here, I can uh, look at all of the points surrounding a cell and then at each point it will do basically a precipitation and temperature uh, Perlin noise. Uh, which will then do a um, biome lookup chart and determine which biome will be based off of that point. Instead of doing it like for every, testing every single um, kind of section for that, instead it will basically create its own Veroni map um, from all those other points and then make a, uh, make a biome specific area around there based off of that map. And so what that does is it creates these these decently sized um, biomes that I, I wanted to create, uh, and plus with the fact that with the with the what's it called the Perlin noise, uh, it will it could in theory be the same. So you can kind of create like a like two maybe the same. So it's kind of like a, a longer stretch of the same biome, and I think this is kind of what I'm visualizing. Now, the thing is, is that this is recorded beforehand before I've actually done this. So hopefully it works and hopefully it looks like that because the rest of this stuff I don't think I'm going to get to, which is, uh, well, the biome based height map, height map multiplier I think I will have included, so it's basically using the double height map and for each biome it'll have a certain multiplier, it's like, oh this is a hilly biome so I'm going to have multiplier 5 and 1 like I was explaining before, so I'm actually going to use that. Uh, Carve small water features, this is what I'm not going to be able to do. Uh, which it can kind of break up the, some of the biomes if I wanted to with with rivers. I think that would be, I think that'd be ideal for the type of game that I'm creating. That I haven't specified yet. <laughs> um, and also like rivers inside of biomes, like a rainforest, and then like a small river inside the rainforest. That'd look cool. Uh, and then also generate structures, so like buildings, cave openings, paths, things like that. Um, Yes, there's going to be caves, like I was talking about with the pearl and worms, uh, and also carve caves, but I don't have anything specific about the caves I'm going to do yet. Uh, I think it's going to be it's going to be a completely independent system, so it's not like, oh, I'm in this biome, I should expect this type of cave underneath. I could maybe do that, I may implement that, but again, I have no clue yet. Uh, and this is completely independent, that's why it's kind of uh, marked off like this. But then both of those determine the vegetation because the vegetation, like you don't want it in a water, uh, you don't want it in a water, you don't want it in a river, and you don't want it in a building. So, like these will basically carve out places where vegetation can't be, uh, and then organisms will be based off the vegetation. I also have no idea what I'm gonna do for organisms. Um, what organisms gonna include? What organisms I'm not? What I'm gonna kind of do with that? I have some ideas on both of those, but I'll get to that later. Uh, so yeah, this is 
what I have and uh, I can show you, hopefully, show you it in action here. All right, so um, yeah, that's that's how it all works. Uh, very long explanation, but you can actually see that it's it's kind of working here. You can't exactly see right now, but if I eject here and I go up, um, you can see that there's actually another thing in play, which is the the first thing that I had to work on, which is the the type of world generation that I did. Uh, you can see a diagram of it now of like the early stages of it in the terms of. There's like the close chunks that are right next to the player that have like physics involved, that have high mesh quality, um, and then the outer chunks, they, they have less mesh quality, they don't have physics, and then the outer chunks just have no, uh, they, they, I think they only have like four squares, which is like eight triangles to render them, uh, and they're much further out, um, and of course there's no physics. So the reason why I'm kind of doing that is for, to kind of create world generation that feels really infinite in that like if you go away from a chunk and then come back it actually feels like time has passed in that chunk then that's not an obvious feature of what I have now but um it is it is planned and in the works essentially it'll just like keep a timer on the far away chunks and it's like oh after 50 seconds pass this thing has rotted or something um you can see that there are this isn't exactly what I wanted it to be uh, in the terms of, one, these are very small islands, they're going to be much bigger. Two, um, every, everything's still kind of a square. Uh, that's because I haven't done the, the meshing of the textures yet. Um, and these are kind of the default textures while I'd, I'd want to actually do some, some personal textures. And you can see some artifacts. There were a lot more artifacts, but I was able to iron most of them out. Um, to make it kind of look how it is. Another problem is that you can see on the map that I was showing uh, in the in kind of explaining it is that it's finite and that is still true. It is still finite. Uh, I do tend to not tend to but want to uh, eventually get to where I basically mesh a whole bunch of maps together to make it infinite and so you load it in, in a world and it's kind of like that. So yeah, it's it was a, it was a long process to get here um, and you can see that it's like I'd, I'd like to talk about one thing here in that the uh, the it's obviously not infinite right now and you can see that it's kind of struggling the more that I go out like I tried to put more um, tiles in but it was it was kind of running a bit slow whenever I was doing that and I, I want to make sure that I don't have it run slow also the water texture just kind of follows you um, but oh yeah I haven't even shown you the the um, the, kind of the map of the final map product that I have. This is the final map, and this is kind of the one uh, that I that I showed in the um, in the preview of like explaining all the math. Uh, and you can see that I I've I've done a lot. Um, I don't know if this is exactly kind of the the height system that I want to go for. I may go for like a, a different type of function, maybe like a more gradual one or something. I, hopefully, it looks better whenever it's bigger islands as well. Um, but yeah, it works pretty well. Oh, and I don't have the um, Perlin noise added for the rivers yet. Um, I just couldn't get to it yet. Because uh, it's just a, a long process. I, I have like many hours of footage of me trying to get just this working, of like trying to get um, like the Veroni diagrams working and all that. Um, but yeah, for the meshes, I, I didn't even finish what I was saying for the meshes. But for the meshes, I did actually find a, a different mesh type system that I can get on GitHub. Uh, that was made to kind of rival this one in terms of taking less um, storage space for, for rendering them, but also having like levels of detail and things like that, because right now I'm manually doing the levels of detail in terms of putting more or less triangles in it, um, and that's kind of how it's running right now. Uh, but I, I may try that out, so like the next the next variation I may go in, fix the um, the issue that I have right now with like a bit of lag rendering in all these um, planes here and I may like make the further out planes bigger in size because it's it's less polygons and I think one of the main issues is that there's just so many mesh renderers it's not the fact that there's too many like polygons or triangles it's just the fact that there's too many um, mesh renderers in the world oh, you can see right here this is kind of an artifact I didn't get rid of all of them there's the, uh, the artifact of it stretching on on these places I think it's just because it's a, a straight line and that kind of messes with the math and it's just kind of a gap here and so it tries to fill it in with <laughs> with this 
Um, but yeah, this is this is kind of what I have so far. Oh yeah, this is the border right here. Um, so yeah, it's experiment around with it, see what you think. This is the very beginning prototype of it, and uh, yeah, that, that was uh, that was definitely a lot of math programming talk and just a whole a whole bunch of stuff that I that I talk about. I, I think I think we all just want to get a break right now and, and uh, listen to some nice music. basically detox from all the programming language and all this math that I've been spitting at you. And now it's time for actually a pretty interesting game that I think you'll really enjoy. And I believe it's actually the thumbnail of this video, which is... Superheroes in VR. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much all that you need to know about the game. Uh, specifically because this is in the past and I don't actually know what I've... Uh, made of this game so far, so uh, let's catch up with them. And I'm back here with a, a new light, so uh, that's kind of cool. Uh, but what have I been working on superheroes in VR? Uh, well, I, I would say decent amount of stuff, but it, it kind of... not a lot, essentially. I do have um, vine swing, web swing. Would you like to see that? Let me uh, quickly plot my board here. My board! <laughs> it's, uh, it's actually a big board. I don't think I can put it all. Uh, but yeah, you can see I've worked on a decent amount of things, I'll just hold it up like this, or I could put it on there, but you know what, I'm not going to because I'm not smart. Uh, <laughs> uh, first thing that I tried to do is return the inputs. Return the input seems like a simple thing, but I haven't used Unreal that much, so I don't entirely know how the input system works, and plus it's VR controllers, how do you get VR controller input. So I did that, that was um, kind of simple, kind of not. The problem with it is that the sample project for VR uh, is purely blue scripts, uh, blue scripts, blueprints, sorry, um, and basically that's like block-based uh, event coding, um, towards like, oh, that event happens, that block runs, it's not, like, directly scripts, and I, I could have programmed, uh, Unreal all in blueprints, uh, but I decided not to because I just didn't want to. Uh, I wanted to just purely use scripts, but unfortunately for the sample VR project, 
I had to use how to use some of the blueprints there and, and learn how to use them. Um, uh, two ray case line, ray case, I can't speak. Ray cast line with web object. Essentially, I get the a position and rotation. I want to ray cast the line. Um, problem with that is that whenever you ray cast the line, it actually pointed upwards, and I wanted it to point outwards. Um, so originally, how I did that was I just applied rotation to it. Um, on like the, the y-axis or something like that, but the problem is is that if you move around that y-axis is globally and whenever you move it like this the y-axis then moves it this way instead of it moving up like that. So I then had to change it to actually be based off of the local rotation of it. Um, and then just run no trigger, that was pretty easy, I just saved the object and then killed it after there's no more trigger. Uh, disable teleport must walk. That was a bit complicated and I'll, I'll kind of explain it down here. And yes, it works. Uh, basically, I had to put a capsule object on it to make sure that I couldn't go into walls and that it actually had something to move instead of just moving nothing, I guess. Um, and then I also wanted to, for the player, I wanted to apply some physics to it. Uh, because I, I couldn't just, like, move... I didn't want to necessarily simulate physics essentially. Whenever you're web swinging, I want you to actually feel the gravity and stuff like that, like actual gravity that's already been made for me uh, using a, a physics game object. This is still awkward to hold, now I'm holding it like this. Uh, so what I basically had to do was I moved the cylinder based off of your player moving with the joystick, also player moving, you know, normally. Um, and so then based off of both of those, I then, it, it's a rigid body, it can move freely technically um, and so then if you like collide into a wall like say this is the wall here and I'm like walking into it technically I'm here but then since it's a physics object the physics object wants to be pushed back so then I basically say I basically ask like hey you physics object have you moved based off of physics <laughs> and so then if it has then it moves the central location so like even though I'm technically moving and I'm going into this, the physics object pushes back and you get put back, which is essentially how most physics things work. I just kind of had to think of that myself. Uh, and so then if you have like the, the home base is like right up here and you're actually physically walking, the home base will move back and you won't actually move in the scene, which is the most disorienting part <laughs> of the whole thing. The, everything else is actually not as disorienting, like the, the moving, like the muscle walking with the joystick as well as... Um, like web swinging, that wasn't actually too disorienting. Um, next thing is to have like a physics link with Ultra Tug. How it works is I wanted it to be uh, a case of proportional force, to where if you if you have something that's half your half your weight, then you'll move that. I guess it'd be one third or no two thirds, and then you move yourself one third. So it's, it's proportionally based off of that. But of course, if it's static, if it's not gonna move like buildings, then all the force is applied to yourself. So if you're trying to move a really large object, you may end up moving yourself. Um, and kind of the same like with cars, eventually if I had them. Um, and then I wanna add an ultra tug. Now an ultra tug, I don't know. It's just, I have problems with the ultra tug. Right now how the ultra tug works is basically if you move your arms around, um, that, that's that's pretty much it. Like the brief explanation of it. It's just if you move your arms around a lot, and it's not it's not that good. I'm probably gonna rework it. Like I want it to be like you tug and then boom, you you just fly up into the air. But it's I don't know it's just not working exactly how I planned it to, and I need a bit more time to kind of fine tune that. Um, so that's something that I'll be working on. Uh, next thing is some accuracy help. I haven't. I decided not to do that because I knew it was kind of running out of time. But basically, accuracy help, uh, you try and shoot at something and you miss and you hit the static object, but it's hard to really aim in a, in a VR game. I, I, mean, I guess I could add like a crosshair to your arm, but that feels really weird. Um, <laughs> instead, what I'm gonna do is it's gonna raycast the object, then what it's gonna do is actually get like eight, eight other, eight sideways search for objects. <laughs> Basically what that means is you're gonna have eight uh, other ray casts around the one ray cast and see if those hit something. So if you're even a little bit off, you should be able to actually get the object. So if you 
If you hit something static or if you hit nothing at all, it'll do the raycast search and be like, Oh, you were trying to get this movable thing, or oh, you missed this building by an inch. Let me hook that up to you. Um, and so that should, that should kind of help with the accuracy, because I don't want you focusing too much on the, the fine-tuning of everything, like, ah, oh, I just missed that by an inch. That's something that I'm working on, especially with the, um, the web swing, which I'll get to later, right now, actually. So, make city, and then good web swing, question mark. Right now, the web swing takes a lot of processing power and a lot of practice to be able to, like, really web swing um, good in the, in the kind of example city that I have. And I don't necessarily want that to be the case. I want you to just like instinctively be like, oh yeah, this is kind of how you do it. And then like, oh, you just reach and like, like you're web swinging and you don't want to be so focused on like, okay, I got a web swing that you forget where you're going. Or it's like, oh, I didn't, uh, I forgot that I, I heard that the, the bad guy's now on that street and now I'm going to turn around, but I got to so focus on, on this. And it's just, I don't want like, because you're gonna have a lot of things to focus on, essentially. I don't want you having to really focus on one thing and then losing out on all the other stuff. Um, sort of like that. So I, it's kind of something to look into. Um, double web connect, cars and trash cans. Yeah, there are gonna be cars and trash cans. Uh, essentially, that's um, like let me let me put down this board real quick because it, it requires two hands. Uh, essentially. What that means is you web swing, web, not web swing, web vine. It's not Spider-Man, I, I swear. You get all those copyrights out of here. It, it's uh, vine, vine, and then you connect the vines, and then those two are connected. So like you could, um, essentially with the cars and trash cans, you just connect the trash can to a car, and then the trash can travels behind the car. I don't know, that, I just thought that was a fun thing, or a fun example of kind of using that, but again, I haven't gotten to that. Yeah, that's what I have so far for this game. <laughs> you can see my, my random scribbles there, but let's actually uh, show you some in-game footage. <laughs> Sound like a, a trailer announcement. Okay, all right, third game. What you've, what you've all been waiting for. I've been doing a whole lot of talking again, uh, but I'm sure you want to see what I have working and done. Uh, and I keep in mind this isn't actually built, so I am still connected. I didn't want to actually test it built. Uh, let me quickly tighten this. Okay, uh, so you can see it's all working as I said it was, <laughs> clearly. Uh, it's, uh, it's some small bugs, uh, which is uh, unfortunate, but it does do the main thing that I've been wanting it to do, which is web sleep. And right now I'm doing a weird thing with my arm, and that's fine. Uh, because now, I can do this. Whoosh. Whoosh. I'm just being very careful in landing on the floor. Um, it has, it, it, it takes a bit to get used to, to speaking as well, because apparently I can't speak either. Um, right, okay, so I gotta swing. I haven't actually done this in a while. I gotta swing and not reach too far, or else that happens. I can swing. Swing. Look at that. Look at that. Hopefully I should, this should be... Oh wow, this is actually working out pretty well. Besides whenever I see it working out pretty well. Um, see, so you can see. This is kind of what I have. Um, yeah. Uh, I would kind of like to, as it's kind of the end of the video, I would kind of like to say that I'm just trying to <laughs> kind of put some web thing here. Um, I'm a bit sorry, oh, wound up in my cord, uh, for all the discussions and stuff, in case you, you didn't want to hear all that, because, I don't know, it's it's just a, starting a project that requires a whole lot of back-end stuff to get done, um, which was really exhausting doing, and I spent kind of two weeks doing nothing, uh, because I was just really afraid of, like, working on this video, or, yeah, working on this video as well as working on this game here. But yeah, so it's, it's taken a while, um, but I have done it. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I would say that this is a fail of a kind of a video and a project idea of doing the three games and all this, but um, it's just a whole lot of explanation and 
like I didn't really get what I wanted to get done for these projects done in terms of actually being good in terms of people being able to play and give some good feedback and things like that. Um, but I am going to say that this was not a fail. Where, where am I? But this was not a fail, I would say. Because I have started something that I think will eventually <laughs> be good uh, in terms of these games and this video idea. Uh, so hopefully the next one should be a lot better. Uh, so stick around for that. Oh, maybe I'm ooh, not. Oh, now I'm doing it. Uh, boom! Oh, that hurt. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, but uh, stick around, subscribe maybe if you want to uh, see these games develop and me develop in terms of video making. Oh, I need to be having two of them. Some cool things that I've done. And I hope that I do a lot more cool things, like, oh, oh, oh wow, <laughs> fly on top of the building. Uh, yeah, it's kind of cool that you kind of get used to, like, you have to get used to it in order to use these, um, these powers. Ooh, but I don't like how you bounce on that. It's <laughs> getting distracted again. Um, but yeah, in order to not make this video too long, which I'm pretty sure it's going to be 45 minutes. So yeah, I'll uh, see you next time, see what other mischief we can get up to in terms of making these games. Maybe I'll have like 10 times more of the progress, or I've completely thrown the three games out. <laughs> You'll never know. <laughs> Unless you subscribe and see the next video. Wow. Welcome to a YouTuber stuff. Can you believe it? I'm gonna go touch the building as I'm signing off. Alright, goodbye. <laughs> Alright, so now is kind of the, the point you've been waiting for. Uh, how do you download these games? Well, it's actually really simple. Let me just write it down right here. You've been fooled and bamboozled. The links were always in the description. You didn't need for me to tell you that. <laughs> I thought it'd be pretty funny if I if I kind of just left the links in the description and made you watch this whole video, just to show you that you could have downloaded them this whole time. But if you stuck around this whole time, I incredibly thank you for for sticking around with uh, all these explanations and basically uh, kind of the development of these games. Uh, so for that. I really appreciate you. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you really enjoyed watching this. I had a, an excellent time making these games, making this video, and I hope that you enjoyed these games in this video as well, and I, I hope it kind of uh, took a bit more of a look into game development, specifically kind of the complex algorithms and math that kind of goes into it, as well as kind of what I imagine, kind of what I go through in making just games in general. So that'll be it, hope to see you next time, and goodbye. Your word of the day is passion. But passion? What, what do you mean passion? Could you put that in a sentence or whatever you do? Ah, yes, passion. Passion for game creating can only go so far for supporting the work involved for video production or other chores. You simply have to specifically invoke your passion in theater to make a video you're proud of. Passion.